Hey everybody, thanks for joining me real quick. Grand old state of Minnesota. The weather is slowly getting worse. Which, you know, the things that I sent, mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I said were coming. Well, they're coming down the pike now. So, yeah. Not very nice outside. It's about 13 degrees. And winter storm is coming. Um, and what they're saying is that by the middle of the night, um, it's already started snowing, but it's just lightly snowing now. And then starting like tomorrow afternoon, it'll start to snow much heavier on through Wednesday night and all day Thursday. They're say expecting that it's going to be as much snow as the blizzard of 1991 here in Minnesota. They're talking about maybe 20, 20 to 24 inches of snow in a couple of days. So, yeah, that's a lot of snow. So, for us here or wherever you are, if you're going through anything similar in any kind of way or you want to just be prepped for if something similar happens in your area, here's some things that you need to do. Make sure you got plenty of water stored up in the refrigerator and not at least enough for three days worth, which is at a minimum. So depending on how many people there are in your household, if you were saying drinking like a gallon of water, having a gallon of water per day per person and multiply that times however many people are in the household. If it's two people, two times three is six, you know, do the math. So I have plenty of water in the fridge or stored up. I don't care if you have the bottled water from the store or if you're chugging it out of a, the out of the sink and putting it into those containers and putting it in your fridge. Make sure you have enough water. If you have any medical devices that require electricity like CPAP, BiPAP machine, nebulizer, um oxygen or whatever you may have that might require a little bit extra energy overnight you want to make sure that you have that you know a way of having some energy and I've done several videos on um, different uh, systems to use for backup uh, energy quote unquote kind of like a generator small like a lunch box much more affordable especially for folks like me that live in a multi-family housing unit you know if you're an apartment a condo a townhouse a twin home a duplex you may not have the same opportunities as someone that just owns a big old massive land and a house but you can still make it work so try to make sure you have something in place for yourself and if you're using something like a CPAP machine or whatever that needs distilled water I hope you got at least an extra jug of distilled water put away that's something that you just need to be prepared for in advance it's not the last minute go-to if you get what I'm saying if you drive a vehicle you want to make sure you have what you need in the vehicle not just a brush for the windows and the scraper for the windows. You want to have uh, a blanket or something in the trunk. Uh, you want to have maybe a small bag of the the cheap kitty litter that you can get from the dollar store. And I know Dollar Tree does carry that small cheap bag. What, why you'd have that is because if you hit a muddy or a snowy patch or icy patch you can take some of that and sprinkle down and be able to run your tires over that so you can get enough traction to get out of the mess that you're in you may want to have a small shovel or something or some kind of shovel that you can carry in the trunk of your car in case you need it granola bar so you have something that you can chew on if necessary if you're stuck somewhere and you've got a shelter in place in that vehicle you want to have something that you can take a bite out of and be able to still have some energy if, if that's, you know, an issue. You know, 
Wear your snow pants if you have them. If you don't have snow pants, carry your extra pair of sweatpants or fleece pants or whatever. Have an extra scarf and hat and gloves or whatever in in the trunk. But also dress appropriately. Dressing in the layers like I did that video last summer. Not last summer. Last winter about dressing in layers and about how important that is so that you don't freeze. You know, and then some people, you know, worry about what am I going to do if if the roads are like stupid bad and really crazy and I can't go to, I, I can't get here to there, I can't go to work or whatever. First, you want to make sure you have all that stuff taken care of for your vehicle and stuff taken care of for your home, like having a flashlight or hand cranked flashlight or radio is always a nice option if you have that. If you don't have that, work with what you got. Have your supplies all together and know where those supplies are. Have things that you can prepare to eat if the power goes out. And have a manual can opener because they do come in handy. So have enough blankets, have everything layered up, lined up, prepared. Um, and I've mentioned before about being stuck in the in a blizzard when I was in Ohio and it was me and my sisters and my mom and my mom's friend and you know when people come to visit and their visit um, ends up rolling into the blizzard time then we're all stuck together and you gotta work together and if you don't have enough blankets then you start grabbing all those clothes that don't fit anymore and sewing them together you know, old t-shirts or stuff that you were ready to throw away. That stuff is still good. There's still some value and some use in that. Turn that thing into a quilt. Sew them things together. Layer it up so it's nice and heavy. And it keeps you warm and your loved ones warm. So, have those things together and have them ready for yourself. If you're told you still have to go out to work, because like in Minnesota... They hardly ever close anything. If they're closing stuff, it means it's pretty significant. And the fact that this is expected to be like the Halloween blizzard in 1991, there is a possibility that there's a lot of workplaces that will close. But there's also a strong possibility that some workplaces will stay open because just like they say the mailman doesn't stop doing his job, there's some places, there's some businesses and organizations that will say, I don't care. We are not closing, and if you don't show up to work, you ain't getting paid. So, mm -hmm. some ideas or suggestions for working through that process, especially if you are an hourly employee, employee and not a salaried one, because salaried employees may have an option of saying, I'll be out of the office today, working from home, da 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 and be able to roll with that and be able to work through the internet or whatever at home. But if you are an hourly employee and your pay depends on your um, being at work, showing up, doing your job, you are valuable. Don't think that you're not. You may feel a little bitter, like, why is it that those folks over there get to go home and do nothing, which salaried people actually are rarely doing nothing. We're, very, 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 very extra busy actually doing the job of two or three people usually, but only getting the one pay. That's how that works. Um, and even if they are home, believe me, they still got work to do. And they're playing catch up, typing away rapidly, making phone calls, and can do Zoom and Skype meetings and all that jazz. But if you're an hourly employee and you're expected to be in at work, but the roads and everything are terrible like they're predicting for here. Give a suggestion to your boss tomorrow. You know, we're expecting to have things pretty rough by Thursday. So I brought a suggestion to, today to be shared tomorrow with staff. But my boss has to check with her boss and make sure it's going to be okay and it'll all work out. And we can roll with it, which would be really cool. And... That suggestion is to make it a training day. If they can't come in the office, I mean, there's still training that everybody needs to do. You know, 
is it possible to receive some handouts or webinars or things that a person can do from home? Because now we're living in a smart generation. People can do stuff through their phone. They can do stuff through their laptop. They can read a handout that's given to them to take home and read, do the written assignment or answer the questionnaire or whatever, bring that stuff back on the next workday. And then there's evidence that they actually did these things and it's something that's related to the job or something that's a requirement as far as a training, you know, because there are annual trainings that are required for everyone. And that's a way that maybe people would be able to be off on that one very crucial day when the biggest dumping of snow or whatever comes and still be able to get some work done. If your boss or the CEO or or the district manager or whoever the head is, if they say it's okay, that could be a way to get some stuff done and be able to still get paid while you're not in the office that day. And then they can run on a, a bare bones um, staff um, with just having a few people there that probably live a lot closer or or whatever the situation may be. But for those that come from a greater distance away or might have some difficulty, might be able to get by with doing a training at home day and then bringing that information back in or, or you know, do some video visits and calls, etc. Get creative. Um, I'd present it. If you know that the storm is coming or something terrible is coming, try to present it in advance of the situation saying, hey, check out what I found. Is this something that we could all work on and then come together and talk at the next all staff meeting, blah, blah, blah? Because it might work for you and keep some money in your pocket. So, and if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be creative so that everybody has something. Because everybody needs food. Everybody needs something. So, that's my suggestion for those things. Make sure you layer up. Put on a couple pairs of socks, too. Snow pants, if you got them. If you don't have snow pants, leggings and then regular pants on top. Or, or regular pants and sweatpants on top. A jacket. You know, multiple layers undershirt or t-shirt, uh, an overshirt, a uh, sweater, a uh, hoodie or jacket or whatever, fleece or whatever, and then put on the regular coat, scarf or something around the neck, hat on the head, gloves or mittens or both on your hands, and the boots. Be dressed, be aware, be prepared, look where you're going. Don't walk too fast because... There could be ice up under that nice fluffy layer of snow. And if you walk the wrong way, you might slip and fall flat on your back and end up in a lot of pain. So that's something that you really want to watch out for and to try to not get caught in. But when you're going out, carry your backpack or lunch bag or whatever, even if it's just like a little teeny tiny whatever. Carry you something. Throw a piece of fruit or two in there or carry you a sandwich or if you got a can of soup or something, then put you a can opener in there too. Make sure you got a spoon or a bowl or a cup or whatever. I try to keep that kind of stuff at work. But carry the essentials of what you need, including a, a bottle of water or an empty bottle that you can fill with water when you get to work provided that there's no issues with pipes bursting or anything because it's stupidly cold. That's another thing. You know, when it gets like really crazy cold outside, your pipes can burst. Some people may be cleaning, working on their place. Oh, I'm feeling so good cleaning everything. Let me open the window, let a nice, cool, fresh breeze in to get the funk out of the place. Not a good idea in the winter, in Minnesota anyway, because it's so dang cold that 
it could cause pipes to burst. And if you live in a multifamily housing unit, like an apartment building, condo, townhouse, or whatever, if you're opening those windows and it's 13 degrees outside, and that wind is coming in, and you're just thinking, woo, it's a little chilly, but I'm getting getting it so that it's fresh and refreshing in here, and it smells better, and everything is nice and wonderful. You have a high percentage of a possibility of your pipes bursting. Not only your pipes bursting, but the whole stack. Meaning, you know, there's if there's somebody that lives above you, somebody that lives beneath you, it could mess up that entire stack. And when the pipes burst, there's water everywhere. And that means nobody has water to flush the toilet or wash their face or drink or eat, prepare meals or anything because all of that would be ruined and would have to be turned off you know from the main water supply which means you'll be in a tough situation for quite a while and it'll be expensive for that to be repaired just something to think about so i hope you're aware i hope you're prepared i hope you've got your stuff together if you're thinking, man, I'm not feeling this crazy bad weather coming on. What am I going to do? What am I going to eat? Try to have your stuff together now. Prepare in advance so you don't have a hard time on the other side of the coin. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're prepared. I hope it doesn't get as bad as I think it's going to get. But I told you all a couple of weeks ago that it was coming. And I told you it was going to come and go through 10 states. It hit a lot of states. It hadn't hit Minnesota yet. But that thing circled back around. And now it's already started snowing here. And it's cold. And it's not as cold as it could be. But it's cold enough. It's, it's the right temperature where we could get a huge dumping of snow here in Minnesota. So... Be aware, be prepared, and treat yourself good. Don't cheat yourself out of the peace of mind, out of your home, your safety. Have your stuff together. Be ready because it's coming. And whether you want want it to or not, it is coming. So be prepared. Talk to you soon.